on my hands, blood on my shirt, blood on my pants. I gotta get it off by doing this work. I gotta get this blood off. All my grips and bloods lost. You was bought with a price. How much that blood cost? Are you understanding that this brother is telling you that you are part of the greatest people on the planet Earth? Right. You hear it, right? Would you identify with the race known as the black race? When you fill out a job application, yeah, right? That's like the only time we have. But do you feel like you're a part of these people when you walk around in the street, when you walk around Houston, you don't feel like you kind of connect or have some sort of affiliation with the black race? Do you feel black? Kind of, sort of? Right, but you do have an allegiance to so-called black people, right? And the reason I ask you that question is because, the reason I ask you that question, I was gonna ask you, how did black people get over here to the Americas? The, the, the transatlantic slave trade, right? Did you know that that was prophesied in the Bible to happen? In the presence of You don't really have like a worldview? Like I'm here. Yes, Say it again. Here. You're here and that's good enough? You ever heard the term, you gotta know where you come from in order to know where you're going? Do you feel like our history is important? It was something that the brother spoke on earlier, right? Where you said, yeah, they kind of just wiped all of that away. Do you think that that was accidental or you think that they deliberately did that for a reason? They did it on purpose, right? For a reason. In your opinion, what do you think that that reason was? Why would they, why would they need to take away who we are and wash away our identity and convince us that we're the color of your uh, uh, ensemble right now and not the actual color of your skin? Why do they teach us in school that our skin is brown, but then they tell us that our race is black? What, yeah. what sense does that make, right? So if you recognize they deliberately did that, what was the reason? Why would they deliberately do that? To pillage land, right? But as they pillage the land again, what was the necessity or what was the need for them to take our identity away, right? Because you, me and you recognize they did that on purpose. They did that on purpose. You got to have a reason why. You have to have what we call motive. Nowadays in their system, in order for somebody to con convict you of a crime, they have to establish motive. What was the reason why they would do X, Y, Z? And they tell us freely they did it. And we understand now because of the fact that we don't have who we are, they clearly took it away. Why would they do something like that, right? Because recognizing who you are, it puts you on a pedestal. Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. It puts you on a pedestal. Like you say, you didn't grow up religious, neither did I. This is not a religious book. Contrary to popular belief, it's not a religious book. This is a book about the way that you're supposed to conduct and carry yourself and the way that I'm supposed to love you. The way that I'm supposed to treat you. And guess what? A way that you're supposed to treat yourself. A way that you're supposed to treat your mother and your father. A way that you're supposed to treat your siblings. A way that you're supposed to treat your kids. And when we have that, we have a lot more unity in the world that we live in right now, right? Amongst those, that race of people that, you, that we identify as black. Do you feel like we got unity? You feel like we got unity in the black community? Hell no, we don't. Hell no, we ain't got no unity in the black community. Listen, I'm going to tell you this. When you answer that question, and when a lot of us answer that question, we answer it from the perspective of ourselves, which is a beautiful thing. I'm glad you understand that. Do you understand it? I'm glad you do. I'm glad you do. Imagine if we had a million of us. See what I'm saying? Remember in 95, they had the Million Man March? What became of that? In 95, niggas start gangbanging again. Niggas start selling more dope again. Niggas start robbing more. So what happened? 
I thought we had unity. I thought we had a level of camaraderie. But see, camaraderie is trust. We might be able to get together, you know what I'm saying, throw a little shit, dig and cut a rug. But at the end of it, you know, you're like, shoot, where my ride at? Because somebody finna be out here that look exactly like me that's going to be tripping. And all of this stuff comes from what they, from when they degraded us and took our identity away. Psalms 83. Bring that out. It's a, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Go ahead. For thou art a holy people. If you, if you understood your identity and why it was necessary for them to take it away from us, you would be able to attach yourself to this history book. This is not a religious book. It's not a spooky book. This is not something that just fell out of the sky. Somebody picked it up and said, you read it and you worship God. This is a history book and, and a record book of all of the men, our ancestors, that had an experience with God that said, love your brother and your sister as you would love yourself. Read. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Are you guys familiar with what the word holy means? The word holy means separate. We think holy means, oh, something that came upon me and then caused me to do the crip walk in church. Something that caused me to do the Harlem shake in church. That ain't nothing about holy. The word holy means separate. We understand how naturally we have a gift and we have a talent and a spirit about ourselves that, that separates us from everybody else. But do we separate ourselves? No, we want to join ourselves and be like all of the rest of them. We want to speak English. We want to embrace our English forced upon last name. Right. We want to do all of those things. It's a problem. The Lord says you are a holy people separate from everybody else. And, and the rules and the codes of conduct that he gave us was given so that we would carry ourselves differently. So that everybody would look at us and say, I like the way that they carry themselves. Not only am I going to honor their behavior, I'm going to respect it. And then the treatment becomes better. As women, don't you guys recognize when y'all carry yourselves differently? Then the way in which women are degraded, you get a lot more respect. Yeah. When you carry yourself in a way in which a dude look at you and just say, I just want the, I just want the bonds. Then that's how he going to treat you. Yep. But when you when a, when a man approaches you and you let him know, listen, it's not what I'm about. You're going to have to step to me correct. Don't you usually get a different result? Don't you get a better a level of respect? That's the same thing that we have to have about ourselves. We have to recognize we're different. Recognize we're separate and carry ourselves as such. Bring it out. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. Not only are we separate, but we special. And God made us this way. God established his love within us this way. You know what happens when we tell black, Hispanic, and Native Indian people that they're separate and they're special? They say, well, what about everybody else? When the hell do we just worry about everybody else when I'm telling you how special and great you are? Read. A special people unto himself. Unto himself. If we understood this stuff while we was on plantations, if we understood this stuff when we go into these jobs in Nemo Marcus and Wells Fargo and all of these corporate Fortune 500 companies, do you think we would sit up and dedicate our lives to build them up? Or would we put more attention and time into building ourselves up? See that? We don't because our mind and our attention is on other things. That's why it was necessary for them to take this book away from us and our identity that came with it. You are Israelites from one of the various 12 tribes, God's chosen people. Understanding that, you now start to look at yourself and say, why do I go about my day-to-day -day living like this? Why do I just sit here and just accept being here and trying to move forward? No, I gotta understand what these people have done. I gotta understand why it was done. Once I understand that, moving forward, I get to do it and make better choices, right? Real quick, real quick, I know you gotta go. But I have to ask you a question. You got life and death in front of you. Which one are you going to choose? Life. Everybody, it seems like an easy answer. But what is life? When you say you're choosing life, what is it? Is life just, oh, I'm not going to go into the grave in the next day or a week? What's life? Give me Deuteronomy 30 and 15. It's a way in which we have to go about making proper decisions, knowing who we are and the way we carry ourselves, that's going to equal life. Because when we're absent of those things, you ever heard the term, I'm dead out here? Mean I'm lacking, I'm without. Either I ain't got no money, either I ain't got the strap, you know what I mean? Either I ain't got no help. Our identity and who we are is the total foundation of, that makes you who you are. What's your name? Kimaya? I'm Taz, nice to meet you. What's your name? Amanda. Amanda? Kimaya and Amanda. Your name represents you, right? Your identity and who you are, your ethnic background, your heritage, your culture, your language. All of that means something to you as well. Do you want 13, uh, 30 and 15?
book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 15. Read. See, I have set before you this day life and good. So the Lord says, I set before you this day life and good. Read. And death and evil. And death and evil. These are situations and these are uh, decisions that we face every single day. From the time you wake up in the morning to the time you lay down at night. You're facing life and good, death and evil. Let's see what death and evil is and let's see what life and good is. Read. In that I command you this day. In that I command you this day. To love the Lord your God. To love the Lord your God. How do we love the Lord our God? You have to obey him. How do you obey him? You keep his commandments. How do you keep your commandments? You treat yourself in a certain way that is holy, separate, and special. And it's the way in which you do it. You don't go into a restaurant and spend hundreds or even thousands of dollars on doo-doo eaters. I'm from San Diego, California, the Pacific. I'm, I'm like 10 minutes from the Pacific Ocean. It smells like a goddamn bad bowel movement. That's right. You want to know why? Because they go into the sea and they take out all of the janitors of the sea and they go and they make it appealing to our people. And you know what we do? Disobeying God, choosing evil and death. We go and take all of our paycheck and we spend it on that to eat it. Hey, hey, listen, you say, but it tastes good though. It smells good though. They've caused us to call good evil and they've caused us to call evil good. This thing is turned upside down. And not only do we look at things backwards, we look at ourselves like we're supposed to be on the bottom of the totem pole when we're really supposed to be on top. All of this stuff is strategically planned. Keep reading. In that I command you this day to love the Lord your God. Go ahead. To walk in his ways. The way you love him is to walk in his ways. And again, they're not hard. You follow thousands of America's laws every day. Right. How much harder is it going to be to follow some of God's laws? Right. All of God's laws, right? Go ahead. And to keep his commandments. And to keep the commandments. Read. And his statutes. Go ahead. And his judgments. His statutes and his judgments. That's why I stopped you. Before you leave. Not only do you have to know you have to obey by the ways and the commandments of God, you also have to understand his judgments. And his judgments are what we call the way you establish justice. How do you feel about the rape, rob, and murder of black, Hispanic, and Native Indians that's been done here in the Americas? It's disgusting. What do you think should happen for it? See that? Now here's the thing. Let's take it from a generalized race level of all of us what would you do if somebody rape, robbed, and murdered your mother, your sister, your daughter? You said what? I can't hear you. Say it again. Get his sister a hand. And guess what? And guess what? Your God feels the exact same way about it. Give me Revelation 13. Hold that. Give me Revelation 13. Your God feels the exact same way about it. This is why it was necessary for them to cherry put this book and take away the totality of it that tells you you're an Israelite, God loves you, made you special, set you above all people on the planet Earth, and that upon the time that you would disobey him, he would allow treacherous things to happen. But upon the time that you would realize what you have done, corrected your wrong, everything that anybody has ever done to you, they got to answer for it. Go ahead. This is Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. Read. If any man has an ear, let him hear. Any man got an ear, let him hear. Read. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. Excuse me, didn't you guys lead black, Hispanic, and Native Indians into captivity? That's the reason why you're able to walk in the, in, into the Galleria right now. Right. The Galleria wouldn't exist right now if you didn't rape, rob, and murder the black, Hispanic, and Native Indians in this place. That's right. That's right. Talk about it. See what happens? They don't have no clue. Read that again. He that leadeth into captivity. He that leadeth into captivity. Excuse me, guys. How do you guys feel about the rape, rob, and murder of black, Hispanic, and Native Indians? You know why they ain't going to say nothing? Because they have the luxury of us not knowing who we are, so therefore nothing would ever happen to them for it. Right. We come back into the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that God has given us, the power, the law, and commandments, and the judgments. They got an answer for it. That's he that leadeth into captivity shall what? Shall go into captivity. Come on, come on Sakura, y'all sleep today? He that leadeth into captivity shall what? Shall go into captivity. Shall go into captivity. Have that ever happened to them for that? Hell no. And guess what? You want to know what? Another thing? Black, Hispanic, and Native Indians, we ain't even looking for it. We're trying to give them a pass and a way to get away from it. Read it again. I mean, finish it out. He that killeth with the sword. When they kill with the sword. Must. Which, hold on. Go. Oh, woo. I like to make love, bro. I don't like to, you know what I'm saying? I don't like quickies. 
You know what I'm saying? I'm in the foreplay. I want to put some music on, some candles. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Grapes. Yeah, it's Baby. Lying. It's, lying. it's all good. He that kill it with the sword, right? Must what? Must, must be, be killed, killed with, with the sword. sword. Must be killed. This is and, and read it again. Finish it out. Finish it out. Here is the patience. The patience and the what? And the faith. Aren't we supposed to be patient and faithful to God? Of who? Of the, the saints. saints. Of the saints. The saints of God, faithfully and patiently waiting for those that led them into captivity to go into captivity. Though as I have been killing them with the sword, to be killed with the sword. That's right. When did we learn this in church? That's why I, it, it's a beautiful thing that you weren't brought up religious. Because you have not been brainwashed and indoctrinated, have you? Beautiful thing. It's not a religious book. This is our history book. The word Bible goes back to a Latin word, biblios, which just means a composition or a collection of records. The same way that you read a history book, the same way that you read it here. The only difference about it is, is that it was inspired by a God that has created the entire universe. So what he does is he, he gives us something called prophecy. He inspires people to say, I can observe what's going on here, and if we continue down this road, something's bad, something bad is going to happen. The same thing our parents been telling us, right? Usually with little girls, they say, you keep being out here being fast, something bad going to happen. Turn around, they usually say, well, look, you keep wanting to run these streets and thinking you gone, something bad going to happen. And nine times out of ten, it does. But see, with our God, he gives us something specific. That's why I asked you earlier, how did black people get to America? You, huh? Who said that? The same man that took your identity away. Can you cite me a source of any black person that, 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 or any records that show for hundreds of thousands of years they've been trying? And it's not to belittle you. It's not to belittle you. But we hear this a lot, and all I ask people is, who said that? Over the last five, ten years, there's been this black awakening in terms of, you know what? I do want to consider who I am before I was brought over here on ships. And you know what we do? Because the people that have had this book and the way that they've mishandled it, they've been looking for everything outside of this. Which is, I understand, can't be mad at you, right? Because I was on the same path before I understood what this thing really was. When they say for the hundreds of thousands of years, black people have been traveling over here, now we gotta understand who's black. What is black? Point I'm making is, according to the transatlantic slave trade, documented history that we can verify, these people, or the people that we are, our ancestors were brought over here on ships. Would you agree? Anybody would disagree. Deuteronomy 28, 68. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. Go ahead. And the Lord thy God shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now the way that the Lord speaks unto us, he speaks unto us in like euphemisms. The same way somebody says, hey, don't let nobody Debo you for your Victoria's Secret. You know exactly what somebody is saying, because you know what Debo does. Debo robs people, he bullies people. This is the same way the Lord is talking to us again, because when we were in Egypt, we were slaves. So he says, I'm going to bring Egypt upon y'all again. Read. This with, time with what? With ships. This time with ships. If you understand the story of Moses going to Pharaoh saying, let my people go, they walked out of Egypt and into the wilderness. Where is this body of water? Where is these ships that's needed to take you back into Egypt? Right? Go ahead. By the way, whereof I spake unto thee, Read. thou shalt see it no more again. The Lord had already promised the Israelites they weren't going to see Egypt again. So this is how we know it's a euphemism. Yeah. It's almost to say, I'm going to bring captivity upon you again. Uh, other times in the scriptures, Egypt is referred to them as the house of bondage. So you just know, I'm going to take them to bondage, but this time with ships. Read. And there you shall be sold into your enemies. Is that what happened to us? Were we taken into captivity on ships, sold unto our enemies? Who was the enemies we were sold unto? And don't whisper it. Huh? But come on, go and finish, go and finish the drink, and then the, the who? The white people. Get it right here, right here, right? You'd be surprised how difficult our people have with saying that. You aren't, you're not gonna be sold into slavery until your friends. She thought about it, she said, shoot. I don't know, maybe. Wait, 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 wait. And when, and when your friends do buy you in slavery, you recognize that they're not what? They're not your friends. They are, in fact, your enemies. We were taken in captivity on ships, sold into our enemies, the white man. Go ahead. For bondmen and bondwomen. For bondmen and bondwomen. It's happened to us. It's our history. Do you know it to have happened to anybody else? 
You're going to be thinking all day. You're going to be thinking for the rest of your life trying to figure that out. But let me, let me add something to it. It also happened to the Hispanic and Native Indians as well. They weren't taken from Africa, brought over here. They were taken from here by the same man that brought us from Africa. And they were shipped to Africa, Europe, the Caribbeans, and all over because trying to subdue them in their own homeland, it got real difficult. Then when they brought the Negroes over here and recognizing through the spirit that we all the same people, they start helping us out. They said, oh, no, 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 we got to break this thing up. That's the division, right? When you walked up, I was talking about the division that we have and we have no unity. Not loving ourselves, therefore not being able to love someone else is where that division comes into play. Read. And no man shall bite. And when you go to that word in the Hebrew, bite means to redeem. That's why we're still here. That's why I got to communicate with you guys in English. That's why we got to sit up here and go and find all of the different ways to join ourselves and conform to what they want us to be in order to, su to succeed. Romans 12. You still got to do Romans 30? Hold that. Romans 12. Diago? All right. Have a good one. You got the flyer? All right. Check out our information. Yeah, we in Houston. Well, you're right. These brothers in the, navy, in the, in the baby blue uh, shirts are from Houston. They be out here. All right? You said your name was Amanda? One more thing before you go. Go ahead. Romans 12 and uh, 2. It's the book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. Read. And be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world, Amanda. Right? I think about that every time I got to back together. Exactly. Don't be conformed to this world. Choose life and good, which is to keep and follow the law, statutes, and commandments of God. Go ahead. But be you transformed. Be, be transformed. What are you transforming from? From the way in which when you walk out of Dillard's, right? Oh, excuse me, the way in which you have to be when you go into Dillard's. Transform from that, right? Read. By the renewing of your mind. And renew your mind. Now, don't walk around not caring about where we come from, the inception of life, the understanding of the world around you. Now you can consider, you can care about it because you have more of an understanding as to where you come from. You have more of, a, of an understanding as to who you are. And now you are able to maneuver through the world you're living in now, being renewed and transformed, and you have a better opportunity to make better choices, right? There's nothing wrong with you getting your paper and going to the dealer to do what you need to do, but long as you don't have to deviate and step outside of the requirements of God, which is ultimately going to bring upon a proper representation of yourself and respect, you good, do what you need to do, but always have a foundation, always have boundaries. Don't, don't you, when you meet a man now, you say, listen, sir, I got boundaries, sir. And you should not cross them. You too grown. How old are you? How old are you? 25. You too grown. You got boundaries. Not only just set them for the men that you deal with, set them for the people that you're around as well. And also set them for yourself. Because, hey, because we can be our worst enemy sometimes. Knowing you shouldn't be out there messing with that man that's been abusing and disrespecting you, but you just sit up and say, ah, I'm still going to go deal with him because you can be your own worst enemy. See what I'm saying? So set those boundaries for yourself. Set the boundaries for the people around you. Do not conform to this world. Renew yourself. Renew your mind. Know you an Israelite, God's chosen people, and make sure that you're obedient unto him. If we can, if we can build up a million Amandas and a million Tazes, Listen, we'll be doing pretty good in the world. Right. And upon that time, yeah. hey, God will come back and return and, and, and deliver us from this captivity. Right. Then we'll start to speak in our native tongue. Then we'll get our native land back. Then we get our culture back. And from there, everybody is going to flock unto us like they already do now. But we're going to get the respect and we're also going to get the monetary benefit from it as well. Right. Right. Remember those grapes I talked about? Don't you want to be sitting back chilling right now eating fat grapes? Instead of eating this, uh, drinking this damn uh, purified water, I want some natural spring water. Right. I want some now. I want some water that's you know given to me from the, from the Father. I want the water in which I can drink and never thirst again. Right. Finish it out. That was it. No. Finish it out. That you may prove what is good. That we may prove. That we may prove what's good. We gotta go out here. How do you determine right from wrong? How do you determine right from wrong? I guess if I would do it and I... Based off of how you, own, how you feel. This is another way in which the destruction or the division comes in. Because how likely is it for you to determine something good and for me to disagree? Very likely. Everybody disagrees with everybody. If everybody did that, we'd never come together. Go ahead. That you may prove what is good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that perfect will of God. And perfection just means dealing with being complete. Back up a little bit, bro, so we ain't blocking the hell, wasn't it? Perfect just means complete. We are not complete. Our way of thinking, our way of life is like Swiss cheese. It's got a lot of holes in it, and it's very much so a lot of voids there. This is where our bad decision, our bad choices come into play, where we're trying to fill these voids with things that we really don't even understand. A lot of time, love. We feel like love is, an, is, is a feeling, we feel like it's an emotion. You see this guy, he didn't get you butterflies all in your stomach, right? You start feeling all giddy, you, got, you just keep thinking about him, and you think that that's just love, not knowing that love is an action. Love is what you perform. Love is what you do. It's not necessarily anything that you feel, right? And, and, and once you have an understanding of what you will do for someone, that's a declaration of the love. How much do you love God? How much would you do for him? You feel me? Is you with me? So what's your nationality? Are you an Israelite? Are you an Israelite? No, I really just gotta say I'm still Amanda. You know You're still I'm Amanda? Saying? Well, I'm gonna tell you this. That's fair, that's fair. I'm not expecting to convince you of anything within the, within the first 30, 20 or 30 minutes that I meet you. But what I will say is, don't be complacent and content with just being Amanda. There's so much more to Amanda than she would have ever thought and knew. Right. So much special things, so much greatness that's to Amanda that you have to go and achieve. You can never achieve it by just sitting there accepting to be Amanda. You feel me? You got goals and aspiration and ambition in life, right? Your identity should be one of them. You got that flyer. Check the information. It's on you now. Either you want to be, hey, either you want to continue to just be, to be chilling. basic. <laughs> Would you say you basic? Thank you. Don't ever be basic. And, ex and just accepting to be Manda, you're going to be basic. Go get more. Go strive for more. You feel me? Am I lying? All right. Have a good day. All right. Get that back and do Army 30. What I have you over? Jump to verse 1. Go ahead. Yep. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 30 and verse 16. No. And that I command you this day to love the Lord your God. Go ahead. To walk in his ways. Read. And to keep his commandments. Go ahead. And his statutes. And his statutes. Read. And his judgments. And the judgments. Like I said, we always got to get to the latter part of the verse because it speaks about the judgments. Our people lack judgment. Our people run from judgment. We have no consideration of judgment, that there are consequences to actions. I'm going to tell you this, especially with a lot of our women. How many times y'all heard, under no circumstances, under no situation should a man ever put his hands on a woman? That means that you're telling me that no matter what you do, there is no line and you don't mind crossing it. You don't mind pressing anything. And guess what? It ain't just with your man. You feel like the law shouldn't, be, shouldn't apply to you either. You feel like you should just be able to go out and do what you want. You should be able to go out and make bad decisions, have no consequences for it, where you have an unsolicited child that's now growing in your belly, and I should just be able to go kill it. Talk about it. With no remorse, with no repercussion, no reprisal at all. That's a problem when we don't feel like there's judgments that should happen in the world. And it starts with something like, under no circumstances. Right. You're out of your mind. The same person that will go upside their kid's head if they touch something in the store. Bring it out. That you may live. That you may live. That's what's going to give us life. Understanding consequences. We understand consequences, we make better choices. We make better choices, we ain't going to go and lay with that man the first day when we meet him. We're going to go, we're going to try this man. We're going to prove and test this man and see whether or not he's somebody that actually wants to build with you, right? And not just chill with you. Go ahead. That you may live and multiply. And multiply. Because that's something, that should be a great, great thing. Life comes with, or excuse me, multiplication comes with life. But we want to take life away. You see how backwards we are as a people? See how backwards our thinking is? Read. And the Lord your God shall bless you. And the Lord our God is going to bless us. That's a blessing when we multiply. Read. And the land, whether you go to possess it. And, and this is the trajectory. This is the standard. This is the direction that we're going in in this place. To deplete ourselves, not to multiply. Only thing we want to multiply is our bank account. We want to put all of the time and the energy into what? Into something that is 
if we just read the article last night that there is a global conspiracy. What's another word for global? Well, I know that's, that's a geocentric uh, concept. Earthly. There's an earthly conspiracy. Worldwide. Worldwide. I like it. There's a worldwide conspiracy right now to create a currency that's going to overpower the American dollar. So why the hell is we putting all of our resources, our time, sweat, and energy into obtaining that to increase our pockets, but to deplete our population? This makes no sense. Read. Keep reading. But if your heart turn away. But if your heart, dealing with your mind in the scripture, turns away from those things, turns away from the blessings, then obviously we're going to go right into the curses that we've been reading about in Deuteronomy 28 from 15 and beyond. Right. Why do we want to turn away from the blessings of God instead of, and, and then go into the direction of the curse, but then turn around and complain to God that we are part of the curse? You just like them Negroes and these goddamn Hispanic and Native Indians that the Lord brought out of Egypt. Cried unto the Lord for the rigorous work and the anguish that they was under just to get into the wilderness free from all of that and to start crying and complaining and trying to disrespect God. Get your mind right, Israel. Read. But if your heart turns away so that you will not hear, but shall be drawn away. But shall be drawn away. She going to go right back into Dillard's and say, hi, how are you doing? Welcome to Dillard's. I'm Amanda. And she's going to put that. She's going to put that image on. And it's hard for our people to break away from it. If our people was to understand to know how to hop in and out, right? And to be uh, 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 become all things unto all men, be wise as serpent and harmless as does, then hey, you might be able to you might be able to freak it for yourself, right? But we don't know how to do it. We've been brought up into that and we stuck. So now when I tell her, you're a part of the greatest people on the planet Earth, I explain her history right here in the scriptures. I tell her how great and special she is, she says, ah, well. I'm just Amanda. I'm on my way back over to Dillard's. I'm going to have to go and just do the same thing, even though she sat here complaining, saying she hates having to do that when she goes into work. Read. But shall be drawn away and worship other gods. They're going to be drawn away to worship other gods. That's all we want to do. We'll worship other gods even unknowingly. 